Hey everybody, welcome back to the bee vlog. I'm Bill. Today I'm going to be showing you how I remove honey from a beehive very easily, painlessly, and without disturbing the bees. I'm going to be using what's called a bee escape or a bee escape board. This is a very simple tool. All it is is a kind of a maze that confuses the bees and they're only allowed to go one way through it kind of a one-way gate. This can be made inexpensively out of just an inner cover, or you can buy these. I think I bought this for about $15, but there are cheaper versions as well, some that even fit right into the hole of the inner cover. I think this type works the best, and all it is is this is the upper portion of the bee escape, and this is the downward portion of the bee escape. This is typically used on a vertical hive any kind of Langstroth hive or Warre hive. If you're creative, you could probably even make one for a horizontal hive, like a, ten, like a Kenyan top bar. The way this works is when the bees go down through the hole and they're trying to make their way out this maze, they can easily navigate the maze one way through these triangular sections, but they have a hard time navigating the maze going the other direction. They kind of get confused by all these different channels. Also, when they are returning, trying to go back up through, they tend to go by the smell. So they kind of cluster around the hole here in the middle instead of trying to find their way around the other directions. I'll be removing honey from this hive today. They have five boxes. The lower three boxes are being used for brood and the top two boxes are being used for honey. Today, I only want to remove one box of honey and harvest that one, then later, if it looks like they have plenty of honey, I might take off the fourth box if this third box is uh, full of honey as well. To demonstrate how easy this is, I'm going to be doing this without any smoke. If you're opposed to using smoke on your bees or if you prefer to not use it very often, this is a really good way to take off the honey. So begin by taking off the covers so that I can get down to that honey super. The two boxes are usually stuck together with a lot of honey. In this case, they're not, so it's not a big deal. But I can feel by the weight of the box that it is full of honey. Then I'm going to use a shim that has an upper entrance on it to go between the boxes. This gives the bees a little more room to be able to get down and pass through this bee escape. Then the bee escape board goes on with the triangle side down because it's a one-way gate down, not back up. The honey super goes back on. The key here is to make sure that you don't have any gaps above the bee escape. There should be no entrance or way back into the box. And then the lid goes back on, being careful not to squish any bees. And now we wait two days. You could do it in one day, but what happens is all the bees that are up in the honey super are not really living there. They move throughout the hive frequently during the day. So when they come out of the box, they can't get back in because the escape board blocks them. And it might take one day for all the bees to move out. I usually give it two days just to be sure. All right, it's been two days and I'm gonna show you the next step now. I'm here with my son, Adam. Hi. We're on our way to the archery range and we're just making a quick stop here to show you how this is done. For the next step, you're gonna need just one more piece of equipment. And that 
Most beekeepers, let's try it, let's do that again. <laughs> I was distracted. For the next step, you're gonna need just one more piece of equipment that most beekeepers have laying around, and that's an extra lid. If you don't have an extra lid, you can just use a simple piece of plywood. All we're gonna be doing is creating a floor for the box we're taking off. Sometimes not all of the bees come out <clears throat> of the super. So I use the escape board one more time on the top. All these bees will fly home <clears throat> with the escape board upside down. Now the bees can come out, but they can't get back in. And I leave it here for a couple more hours. I did something dumb when I put the bee escape on I left a gap here on the corner and the bees have figured out a way in so they are probably robbing out the box now so I'm gonna weigh this down with a brick so the bees can't get in anymore and those that are in can get out but they can't get in through the top okay so let that be a lesson make sure that there are no gaps and no way in for the bees before walking away but here's how a bee escape works. You can see that the bees that are on the outside of the mesh can't figure out how to get in. They're following the smell of the honey, so they go to the screen instead of to the corners. The bees can figure out how to get out of the corners, but they usually can't figure out that that's the way in. Well, things finally settled down, but I did have to wait until after sunset for all the bees to go home. Unfortunately, due to my error in leaving that gap under the escape board, it allowed for a robbing frenzy to start, and once they get a reward for their attempts to infiltrate the box, then it just creates this big frenzy, and they keep coming, and more bees come, and more bees come. But if you're able to keep them out of the box, it doesn't happen. This was a mistake on my part, and something that I've never actually done before. This usually works perfectly. Um, so I will actually show you another better version of this in this video. And now that I've failed, you should ask yourself, would I ever fail on purpose just to show you what not to do and never tell you? Because, uh, no, that's not what I did. One more try. Very heavy super comes off. The spacer goes on. The B escape goes on with 
the uh, one-way gate facing the right direction. Super goes back on. Make sure there are no gaps getting up into the super from the outside. And then we wait two days. All right, it's been two days. Take the super off, put it on the bottom platform. In this case, I'm using a lid. You can use anything. Take, look at all those, look at all those bees on the underside. I'll shake them into the hive. And put this on upside down. And finally, I'm using a strap to make sure there are no gaps. Walk around and make sure that I've filled in that there aren't any gaps. Good, we're good. All tight. This should work. And look at that. No bees. All clear. Not a single bee. Here they are hanging out of the front of the hive because it's a hot day. It was 100 degrees today. Ugh. But they are well ventilated here. Look at the bearding up here on the top vent. Anyway, next step is to take this box home and harvest it. All right, in my next video, I'll show how I extract the honey using the crush and strain method. So if you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button and you'll get my next video in your feed. Next time on the Bee Vlog. My preferred method of extracting honey is using crush and strain. I find it's faster, less messy, and less honey goes to waste. With less equipment, and even less expensive equipment, this is also the cheapest way to harvest honey. And everything stores away nicely, taking up less space in the garage or closet. Even though I use foundationless frames, this can also be done if you use foundation. Besides harvesting honey, I also get a nice wax harvest, which to me, is more valuable than the honey. No wax gets thrown away. I melt it all down and use it for a variety of things.